Good afternoon. Today, I want to give you a lecture on ICT, lecture six, which is going to talk about e commerce. E commerce is a very important aspect of business as we speak today because we do businesses and other activities using the computers and other ICT gadgets. So, because of this, it is imperative that we discuss what e commerce is and how we can benefit from this facility or this technology. So, then let us first define what e commerce is or basically, e commerce is. Commerce, in short, is just the exchange of goods and services for money. So basically, commerce consists of a buyer, and these are the people with money who want to purchase a good or service, and there must be a seller, okay, of course, the people who offers the goods and services to the buyers, and there must be a producer. So these are the people who create the product and services that the seller offers to the business. So now when these three elements are available, then there's what you call commerce, right? Now, you need a product or service to sell. You need a place from which to sell the product. You need to figure out a way to get people to come to your place. And also, you need a way to accept the orders. These are the elements of commerce which you need to put in mind. But you need to fulfill this for you to have commerce about it. So now, let's continue now with the elements of commerce. Apart from those that we have discussed, you also need a way to accept money. You need a way to deliver the product or services, often known as fulfillment. Sometimes customers do not like what, you, what they buy, so you need a way to accept returns. And also you need a way, okay, you need a customer service and taking for support department to assist customer with the product. So if these elements are possible, then you're on the right path to what you're referring to as e-commerce. So now what is e-commerce then? E-commerce basically stands for electronic commerce, okay, which is a set of technologies, applications, and business processes that links the business, consumers, and the communities. For buying and selling and delivering products and services, for integrating and optimizing processes, within and between the participant entities. That's what e-commerce is. In other words, you can say e-commerce can also be defined as the doing commerce with the use of computers, networks, and commerce enabled software. So, e-commerce uses electronic technology such as internet, intranet, electronic protocols, right? So now, what is the importance of electronic commerce technology. So we need to understand the terms that we would like to use in e commerce. For example, transaction. So transaction can be defined as an exchange of value. Anything. Okay, maybe buying something, that's a transaction. Now what's the business process? A group of logical, related and sequential activities and transactions in which businesses engage. That's what you call business process. How about the commuting or telework? So employees log into a company computer through the internet instead of traveling to the office. That's what you call telecommuting or basically telework. So now there's a difference between e-commerce and e-business. So the words commerce and business don't have much difference in English and are largely interchangeable as nouns describing organized profit-seeking activity. So therefore, the difference between e-commerce and business is that issue. But the different terms do carry different meaning. For example, if business transactions involve involving money are e-commerce activities. Can you get that? So e-business which involves money, then that becomes e-commerce. However, there's a much more to business than selling products. So if the activities, okay, that has to do with business, but there's no money involved, then basically we can just generally call that as e-business. 
But the moment money is involved, then it becomes e commerce. So money is a differentiator. So business can just be marketing, procurement, customer education. Okay. Those are what you call e business. Not just to market things, procure things, to win, to educate the users about the product, that is basically business. But the moment money comes into play, then it becomes uh, e commerce. So e business goes far beyond e commerce or buying and selling over the internet and goes deep into the process and cultures of an enterprise. It's a powerful business environment that is created when you connect critical business systems directly with customers, employees, vendors, and business partners. So basically using intranet, extranet, e-commerce technologies, collaborative applications, and the web makes the work more profitable. So, Dell Computers gets a lot of attention as a pioneer in e-business today and is the best example of this form of business. For example, it sells 15 million US dollars worth of computers to most websites each day. So, Dell Computers makes use of these two activities, the e-commerce and the e-business. There are companies, okay, that are created fully with these activities. Okay, so by treating them as collaborators who together find a way of improving efficiency across the entire chain of supply makes this technology more user friendly and also very important. By discussing e commerce versus e business, so e commerce generally refers to buying and selling electronically, okay, usually interactive. Then e business refers to conducting business activities, including the business to business activity using electronic communication. Now, what are the categories of commerce? We've got five categories of commerce. There's what you call business to, cost to consumer, B2C. There's business to business, B2B. There's business to employee, business to consumer, and business to government. All right. So now let's look at uh, the four major categories of e-commerce, right? As you can see from this diagram here. So business originating from business, okay? And business selling to business, we call them B2C. So basically there are four, the B2C, C2B, B2C, and C2C. These are the common e-commerce categories. So you can see the B2C, businesses sell products for services to individuals so these are the examples that you can talk about for example omart.com is an example of b2c right so b2b businesses sales products and services to businesses right and these are the examples that you can see on this outside right so c2c the most common where participants sell products and goods to individuals right we can see these people, okay, when we go in town, they're selling products to us. They don't have any physical business infrastructure or structures, but they do business to individual with fellow people. Those are the examples of B or C to C. So e-commerce applications, we've got supply chain management, for example, e-commerce, bid on demand, remote banking, procurement and purchasing, Online marketing, advertisement, home shopping, even auctions. These are the examples of applications of what? E commerce. Now, what is the history of e commerce? How do you start? E commerce application first developed in the late 1970s, where electronic fund transfers, the AFTs, also called wire transfers, were in use. So electronic transactions of account exchange, information over a private communication networks. All these are some of the examples of e-commerce enabled applications. So if you go to the shop, buy goods, but you use the card to swipe, you call it wire transfer arrangement. That is an example of e-commerce. So these are the applications that are developed since 1970 to fit to be called e-commerce applications. So, 
e-commerce is limited to large corporations in those days, financial institutions, and a few other guiding businesses were able to use these applications at that time. So you can see, okay, the, the retailers, service providers, and manufacturers were also included in this pool okay, of e-commerce users. All right, so this is the diagram that shows e-commerce technologies and commercialists through internet. So you can see how e-commerce has exploded since 1994 to 2003 with regards to the growth of the technology in this case. So now these are the, this is the chart or the table that shows the growth of e-commerce as, as we move towards uh, the 2000 years plus. Now what are the forces behind e-commerce? We've got what we call customization and customization, digitization and connectivity, and the explosion of internet and the new types of interjars. So you can see these are the forces of e-commerce. Now let's look at digitization and connectivity. Of course, we are talking about intranets connect people within company, extranets connect a company with suppliers, distributors, outside the partners, internet connect users around the world. So internet exposure in this case, we can see explosive worldwide growth form in the age of new economy. So increasing number of users each month who uses the internet makes this technology to thrive. And then we've got uh, the new types of uh, intermediaries. Oh, we're talking about direct selling via the internet bypass existing disintermediation. So we're talking about brick and mortar firms becoming brick and mortar companies. As a result, some brick only companies have failed. So you can see the brick and mortar companies, these are physical companies that exist without internet. They don't appear anywhere on the internet, but they've got physical structures. Okay, where people can go there and do business. Now, these are the companies that are becoming a click and mortar. You can also find them on the internet. You don't have to physically go to their location and buy things, but you can open your computer and do the transactions on the computer of such organizations. Such that if the online transactions fails, you can still fall back to the physical firms and do a business. So that's why the click on the companies which exist only on the internet they also fail. So customization and customization was the difference. With customization, the company custom designs the market offering for the customer. But with customization, the customer designs the market offering and the company makes it. So that's what you call customization. So when the customer designs the market and then the company offer is customization. But customization, the company designs the products. That's a difference. So other forces behind e-commerce for technological, that is the degree of advancement of the communication infrastructure, political, we're talking about the law of government, creating registration, funding and support. We've got social, IT skills, education and training, and we've got also economical she was talking about generally health and commercial health of the nation. Other forces behind e commerce, it also includes organization culture, the attitudes, commercial benefits, impact on financial performance, skilled workforce, employment of customers, competition. All these have contributed to the growth of this technology called e commerce. Benefits. One, expanded geographical reach, because you can access it anywhere in the world. Expanded customer base. Increase visibility through search engine marketing. Okay, provide customer valuable information about your business. It's available 24 seven, never closes. Build customer loyalty, reduction of marketing and advertising costs. Correction of customer data. And basic benefit of e-commerce, okay, increased sales, 
in this place before looks for this as the most important benefit. Now there's no system that is perfect. Now what are the limitations? One organization limitations, lack of security, reliability standards, changing technologies, pressure to invent competition, regarding old technology versus new technology. So all these makes okay this is a system not to be good. Then to the consumers, equipment cost, you have to buy the, the tools, the servers, you have to have the knowledge so that you can able to use this, you need to know how to protect yourself, privacy, all these issues, okay, brings but puts burden on the consumer. As a result, some shine this technology. And to society, less human interaction, social divide. You cannot negotiate with the computer. Whereby if you go to a shop, you want that with certain things, you can talk to someone, negotiate, calm down or reduce the price according to your own liking. But with the computer, those things are not there, it's rigid. Technical limitations, okay, there's a lack of universal acceptance, standard for quality, security. And also telecommunication bandwidth is insufficient, it's not universal in, in all the areas in the world. Other countries are still have issues of bandwidth. So there are difficulties in integrating the internet and e-commerce software with some existing application. So special web servers in addition to the network are needed. Internet accessibility is still expensive and so basically these are the limitations that you can see with regards to technical aspects. So people, this is how far we can go in e-commerce. If you're interested to know more about e-commerce, you can still go on the internet and look for more details. And this is the way forward for most of the businesses for you to have those benefits that I've talked about. Increment of sales and the customer base. Okay, so until the next time, people, this is how far we can go. See you.